Okay, good afternoon class and uh, welcome to another lesson in general physiology. Today we will, we will be discussing the lymphatic system, although it is uh, attached to another topic about immunity, but uh, immunity will be discussed as a different subject for you which is immunology. No? So we will only be focusing on uh, the function of the lymphatic system as a system of lymphatic vessels together with the lymph fluid which is circulating throughout this network of lymphatic vessels. <clears throat> and um, I also made this uh, video recording in response to the circumstances where some students are undergoing to a, to a certain degree of anxiety and depression as a result of the election. So I made it uh, appropriate to make this video and make it convenient for uh, the students so that they can view this video and study it uh, in their own most convenient time and please. <clears throat> now, let's uh, first um, make it clear that the lymphatic system generally has to uh, covers two basic function. First is it provides us with immunity. And that is that means it protects us from um, from potential threats coming from pathogens that may invade us and cause disease. And the second part is um, the role of lymph fluid, because uh, probably among the different topics here. Uh, the lymphatic system, particularly the role of the lymph fluid, is not thoroughly discussed by many teachers. And so I felt that it is best that we somehow highlight the very important role of lymph fluid. For the first function, which is immunity, immunity for the body comes in two forms. One is innate immunity, and second is adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is something that we inherited. It's something inherent in us. We don't need to develop it because the, well, our parents handed it over to us. The nature of this response is fast. It is non-specific, meaning to say it has, it has not been programmed to identify a specific target and it does not require memory. So that means you don't need to experience a prior exposure just to develop this. Um, there are many examples of innate immunity. Most of them are in the form of physical barriers. In fact, the skin is a classic example of this. There are also other barriers, no? yung mga blood-brain barrier, yung uh, uh, mother uterine or placental barriers, those that has the purpose of protecting a particular system from unwanted intrusion of potential threats. <clears throat> uh, pH extremes such as the vagina where it has an elevated level of acidity to protect the environment you know, from having, uh, especially from bacteria, where it has a potential to uh, replicate and uh, multiply, reproduce fast when the environment makes it ideal for them. Uh, phagocytes and natural killer cells are white blood cells, which also plays a, a major role in immunity. Fever um, is also one. I think I have we have learned actually uh, how fever is 
so bad yet it is very good for us. Inflammation, non-specific siya. Okay, so for the complement and interferon, they are involved in complex uh, reactions or a complex activities involving uh, how uh, innate immunity is very, what you say, very profound, no? in as much as nagkakaroon ng cascade or umuulan ng complement pati interferons. So very much like in the process of coagulation, where there is a cascade of clotting factors to ensure that the blood coagulates when bleeding is happening or is occurring. Adaptive immunity, on the other hand, is lower because <clears throat> it uh, requires the body to study first the disease or whatever infected it before it develops immunity. And when it does, the response is specific. That means it develops an immunity intended specifically for a, uh, let's say, a virus or a bacteria. And it has memory, meaning to say you need to have prior exposure to develop immunity from the potential pathogen. And the primary white blood cell that is involved here are the lymphocytes, particularly the T cells and the B cells. <clears throat> now to understand the lymphatic system, we have to study first the components or the tissues and the organs that are involved here. Okay. The lymphatic system is rich with lymphatic tissues, meaning to say, uh, aside from the organs themselves, um, there are tissues that somehow clusters together to perform a specific function. And as thus, and thus, since they form together, but not really forming an organ, they are referred to as lymphatic tissues and their composition are predominantly reticular connective tissue that contains a huge population of lymphocytes. Puro lymphocytes ang laman. Okay. Another major uh, component is the bone marrow. Uh, the bone marrow is um, one good example of a reticular, uh, of a lymphatic tissue because it's not an organ. No? It's actually a huge population of developing blood cells. So may stem cells siya, and there are also other blood cells in different stages of development. Then the third component is lymph, which is the fluid. It is actually an interstitial fluid that is inside the lymphatic vessels very much like blood is inside the blood vessels. And uh, what does the lymphatic system actually do for the body is that it returns excess filtration from capillaries to circulation. Meaning to say, uh, later on I will discuss you the mechanism where lymph fluid actually comes from. Lymphat the lymphatic system is also involved in the transport of dietary lipids and the maintenance and distribution of lymphoid organs, um, filter bacteria, and help active defenses. And there are actually several of these lymphoid organs that uh, includes the tonsils, the appendix, Payer's patches, and the primary organ would be the spleen. <clears throat> so this is a graphic representation of the lymphatic system. And if I'm going to ask you the question, in what direction does the lymph fluid actually flow? That is the probably the most 
uh, important question of the day. Because if we're going to ask, what is the direction of uh, the blood flow in the arteries? Of course, the quest, the answer to that would be arteries uh, carries blood away from the heart, whereas uh, veins, if another question is raised about veins, veins carries blood towards the heart. So it it all is a matter of the direction of the blood flow. Okay, so hindi, it's not a question of whether it contains oxygen or the oxygen uh, or the oxygenated blood because it's quite confusing considering that the pulmonary vessels carry uh, oxygen and the oxygenated blood opposite to what the standard uh, blood vessels do. Kaya sa lymphatic vessels naman, in what direction uh, does uh, lymph flow? The answer to that question, all lymph fluid actually is drained from the different uh, organs and tissues of the body. And once it is drained into the lymphatic vessels, the lymphatic vessels all go back to the direction towards the heart where the lymph fluid is uh, eventually mixes itself once again with the blood before the blood enters the first chamber, which is the right atrium, where all of the blood from the upper and the lower regions of the body converges into. <clears throat> now let's describe what lymphatic vessels are. Uh, the lymphatic vessels actually begins at the lymphatic capillaries and these lymphatic capillaries are draining excess fluids that the veins cannot accommodate. I say, diba, if we're going to look, tignan ko nga kung may diagram dito. Ayan, mamaya. So let's look at first lymphatic capillaries. They are slightly larger than blood capillaries. And uh, they are, uh, the walls are made up of overlapping cells like a one-way valve where pressure will force the fluid in. Pagad, di ba, mga, ito yung wall ng lymphatic vessel, overlapping yan. There's no actual opening, but fluids enter by forcing, di ba, by pressure, forcing the fluid to enter the vessels. And these capillaries merge together to form larger and larger vessels. And uh, they are thin-walled, and they have more valves than veins to prevent backflow. Okay? And this is very important because lymphatic vessels provide drainage. And if drainage is not accomplished or cannot be achieved, uh, it will result to edema. Yung tinatawag nating uh, pagmamanas. Okay, so when you hear the word edema, that means there is poor drainage where lymph is not properly drained in places where it, be it is beginning to accumulate. <clears throat> Periodically, along the course of the lymphatic vessels are lymph nodes. Uh, what are lymph nodes? They're actually capsulated structures that contains a significant population of resident lymphocytes. And uh, from the lymph nodes, they are actually strategically uh, situated uh, in places that protects the pathogen from reaching the heart. Actually, yun ang pinaka ano nun eh, di ba? Kunyari, if this is the heart, there are lymph nodes in the neck, meaning if the infection is from the head, 
it's the role of the lymph node to prevent it from reaching the heart. Because when it, once the infection or the pathogen reaches the heart, well, the heart could spread it faster than anyone else. Diba? The moment that it's pumped, kakalat ng gusto. So to avoid that, may lymph nodes tayo. So if there are lymph nodes in your armpits, any infection in your upper extremities has to pass through the lymph nodes to prevent it from reaching the heart. So may lymph nodes din dito sa inguinal region. In fact, marami ding lymph nodes dito sa mga internal organs natin. For example, <clears throat> Um, when I got operated on my kidney because I have, I was discovered to have kidney cancer and the tumor was removed. Alongside the tumor, several lymph nodes uh, around the kidneys were, were, were biopsied to detect if the cancer has spread and fortunately uh, there was none. And that is the reason why I am still here with you today, teaching you about the lymphatic system. So from the lymph vessels, lymphatic vessels, it will now, all the lymphatic vessels will converge on the thoracic duct and eventually uh, sa la, sa left subclavian vein where it is at junction with the jugular vein. So dito dito pumapasok no yung thoracic duct ng lymphatic system it will join with the left subclavian vein and the jugular vein and mixes with the blood eventually mixes with the blood on the right side yung right lymphatic duct naman will join with the right subclavian vein prior to entering the uh, right atrium no kung saan nagko convert sila sa di ba meron tayong sa left subclavian vein uh, and jugular it enters the heart via the superior vena cava yung right subclavian vein naman then enters the heart by passing through the inferior vena cava so napansin niyo no ang mga ang lymph fluid humahalo siya sa dugo bago ang dugo bumalik uli sa puso. Now, let's understand how lymph is formed. So, itong diagram na to, let's divide it into two parts. The one with the red is the arterial side. So, that means the blood comes from the heart. And the one with the blue color are blood vessels on the venous side, meaning to say the blood is returning back to the heart. And the green one are the lymphatic vessels, uh, the green one. So where, does, where is lymph here in this diagram? So as blood flows through the uh, arteries, siempre it will reach the smallest blood vessel, which is the capillary bed. So let's imagine this um, part that I have encircled as the capillary bed. <clears throat> diba sa capillary bed, ang mga blood vessels don't semi-permeable na? Kasi it, it is where gas exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. It is also where nutrients and waste products are exchanged with each other, making it very permeable. In so doing, there is also a substantial amount of blood plasma leaving the artery and goes to the capillary bed. Okay, kaya yung uh, yung mga nasa may capillary bed. By the way, it is found in the tissues of your organs. And the movement of fluids from the arteries going to the capillaries and going to the organs 
is what makes the organ fluffy. Di ba meron siyang ini-exhibit na tonicity? Meaning to say, just like a balloon, kaya ang balloon fully inflated, may hangin. For example, the reason why you're looking, seeing the kidney as a bean shaped healthy organ because there is some kind of uh, probably turgor pressure diba, that inflates the kidney instead of looking it like a sh shriveled or shrunken organ. So fluids are actually what keeps their turgidity intact. <clears throat> And what contributed to the movement of fluids from the arteries into the capillary bed is hydrostatic pressure. So, sino nag-generate ng hydrostatic pressure? Obviously, it's the heart. Kasi the heart is a very strong pump. But as the blood travels farther away from the heart, the pressure the pressure decreases but upon reaching the capillary bed the pressure is still strong enough to force some of the fluids out of the arteries and into the capillaries so kung tuloy-tuloy itong -tuloy pagtakas ng fluids from the arteries to the capillaries there is a tendency for the organ to swell out of proportion in fact if the movement is uncontrolled, it will result to edema. Kumbaga yung mga organs nagmamanas. But edema under normal circumstances do not happen because there would be drainage on the venous side. Meaning to say, uh, fluids that leave the arterial side builds up in the capillary and once it builds up, excess fluids will be drained or fluids will be drained back on the venous side. Kasi nga, semi-permeable naman kasi yung blood vessel. And the movement will not be opposite. Now, it will not reverse its direction because as long as the heart is beating, the direction will always be from the arterial side to the venous side. Diba? Hindi babalik yan. It will not reverse its direction. So what causes the fluid to enter the veins is relatively a weaker pressure. And we call it osmotic pressure. So let's uh, recall no? what causes the fluids from the arteries to leave the blood vessel is by hydrostatic pressure. And what causes the fluids to drain back into the venous side is osmotic pressure. But osmotic pressure is less than hydrostatic pressure. Meaning to say, if you view the cup, if you view the organ as a room where water enters through a big door but leaves through a small window, that would be the case actually. Parang ganun ng ano. So if that is the case, the, the room gets filled up with water because there is no equilibrium. No? The water enters the door but leaves through a small window. So in this case, there is an uneven pressure and thus edema is likely to happen. And there, uh, so uh, to avoid that from happening, it is the lymphatic that enters the story. Whatever fluids the veins could no longer accommodate because of the weak osmotic pressure, the lymphatic vessels will eventually drain the excess fluid. And once the fluid enters the lymphatic vessel, it is then that you call it lymph fluid. So therefore, Ano ngayon yung tawag kung kumbaga if the fluid is in the blood vessel the fluid is part of blood diba and if the fluid is uh, in the tissues the fluid is called tissue fluid but once the fluid enters the lymphatic vessels you now call it lymph fluid and that is the story of how lymph 
fluid is formed or produced. Okay, this is another magnified view of how lymph from the, from the capillary bed or from the tissues, from the tissue fluid, enters the lymphatic vessel. As, I, as described earlier, the lymphatic vessels, the walls are made up of overlapping cells, and it is through inserting in between this overlap that lymph enters the lymphatic vessels. So let's recall again, what in what direction um, does lymph fluid flow? The direction is from the tissue to the veins. And what actually facilitates that movement is through muscular pumps or whenever the muscle contracts and respiratory pumps uh, go together with the venous return. Okay, kumbaga, even if a person is standing and under the influence of gravity will prevent the blood from returning back to the heart, but that is not the case because even though in an upright position, the muscle and the respiratory pump help, the, help blood as well as lymph to return back to the heart. Okay, the lymphatic system, uh, if you are familiar with the diagram of the circulatory system showing the movement of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, in addition to that, the lymphatic system was inserted in places where the capillary beds are situated. And as I have described to you earlier, ano ba yung fate ng lymph fluid dito, no? Babalik din ang lymph fluid sa circulatory system and the lymph fluid will eventually mix with blood prior to returning back to the first chamber, which is the right atrium. I'm not sure kung gumagana to, pero hindi na yata. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at the lymphatic organs. Ano ba yung tinatawag nating lymphatic organs? The lymphatic organs are divided into primary lymphatic organs and secondary lymphatic organs. The primary lymphatic organs consist of the red bone marrow and the thymus. Why are they called uh, primary? Because this is where the lymphocytes actually originated. This is where they are created and where they develop. And when these lymphocytes develop, they will develop into either the B and the T cells. Now, I want to make it clear to everyone what the letter B and the letter T stands for, because probably you're talking, thinking of the word beta or B cells and T cells theta. Now, that is not really the case because B cells, well, uh, uh, colloquially or under normal situation have been known to stand for the word bone marrow. But the exact origin of the letter B actually stems from the word bursa of Fabricius where this is part of the bone, uh, particularly in the as uh, in the sacral bone, where uh, hematopoiesis was observed for the first time, and the uh, scientists describe the place where hematopoiesis was observed as the bursa of Fabricius. Pero bone marrow din kasi talaga ang pinaka principal site of hematopoiesis. So it was known to stand for the bone marrow. 
And the T cell stands for thymus. <laughs> Students would often commit the mistake that whenever I mention the word thymus, they would be touching this part of the neck. <laughs> that is actually wrong because when you touch this, you are actually referring to the word thyroid. And the thyroid is completely different from the thymus. Okay, mali yan, no? The thymus is found here. It is anterior to the heart, but uh, posterior to the sternum or the breastbone. Nasa pagitan siya actually. And uh, it is also, it is also a primary lymphatic organ due to its embryological nature. Okay, what I mean is in a developing embryo, while the embryo has not yet fully developed the bone, so when bone is not yet fully formed, it means that there is no hematopoiesis yet in a developing embryo. So the question, Kung wala pang bone marrow ang embryo, where does the blood come from? Di ba? So the blood comes from the thymus because, well, there is no bone marrow yet. The thymus is the primary hematopoietic organ. It becomes a primary lymphatic organ pri uh, by virtue of being the primary source of thymus or T cells. Now, for secondary organs, why we call them secondary is because the resident population of lymphocytes here are not actually uh, parang indigenous. No? This is not where they come from. Galing pa rin sa bone marrow yung mga lymphocytes, they just migrated to the secondary organs where they uh, took up residence there indefinitely. And when a potential threat uh, is detected, these are organs that manifest immune responses. For example, yung lymph nodes, di ba yung tinatawag nating ulane. Diba? Pag meron tayong infection sa, sa paa, may kula, yung, the lymph nodes become prominent. We can easily palpate it. Or when we have a tooth infection, the lymph nodes here in your neck becomes very pronounced, no? swollen. No? Uh, the spleen also uh, manifests an immune response by rapidly increasing the population of B as well as T cells and also the lymphatic nodules. No? So there are many places where these nodules can be found. No? For example, yung mga areas ng tonsils, no? as well as the pears, patches, no? mga examples yun ng uh, lymphatic nodules. Okay, now in general, the thymus is a two-lobe organ. Okay, and this is primarily where the T cells divide, meaning to say, eh paano kung ipinanganak na yung bata? What if the baby has been born and the bone marrow becomes functional? When that happens, the thymus begins to decrease its function and begins to shrink. Nagsishrink siya because the function decreases and in a mature individual such as you and me, the thymus could no longer, it could even not be discernible at all. No, hindi siya napapansin, no? And only relegated to uh, producing T cells. <clears throat> Lymph nodes are scattered throughout the body and they are concentrated near mammary glands, axilla, uh, yung sa armpit and inguinal or the groin, groin. And they contain mature B cells and T cells, dendritic cells, and macrophages. So, mga ano to? Mga uh, 
it's white blood cells that respond to any potential threats. So they, their role is to filter lymph. Before lymph is returned back during drainage, it needs to be filtered and whatever foreign substances that are present in the lymph gets trapped. And once trapped, the macrophages and lymphocytes destroy most of these foreign substances. This is a cutaway view of a lymph, a lymph nodes that contains a collection of B cells, plasma cells, um, T cells, dendritic cells, and macrophages. Okay, so I would like to make it clear that prior to your immune immunology, ang mga B cells, once activated, transforms itself into a plasma cell. So how does the lymph node works? So when the lymph nodes work as a filtering organ, where does the lymph enters? It enters the lymph on the convex side of the capsule through vessels called afferent lymphatic vessels. And if ever there is a foreign or a pathogen that enters the lymph node and gets detected, ma-activate to. And right there and then, it will be eliminated and prevented from leaving through the efferent lymphatic vessel. That's the reason why it swells is because all of these cells undergo uh, massive reproduction through clonal expansion. Okay, so what, what is the significance of clonal expansion? Clonal expansion is a different form of cell reproduction because it primarily is similar to mitosis. We're in from one cell, mitosis simply divides, we're in the end product of two cells are completely identical to each other. Unlike hematopoiesis, hematopoiesis is where a blood cell needs to start as a stem cell. And a stem cell needs to be stimulated by a specific hormone. So if a stem cell has been uh, stimulated by erythropoietin, only then will the stem cell become a red blood cell, diba? Or if it was stimulated by a granulopoietin, it becomes a granular leukocyte. Or if it was stimulated by a thromboepipoietin, it becomes a platelet. So the manner of forming new cells through hematopoiesis is completely different from clonal expansion. And clonal expansion proceeds rapidly. Kaya biglang nagsuswell. Bigla kasi dumami yung population ng lymphocytes, ng B cells, pati T cells sa loob. Kaya parang nagswell yung uh, lymph nodes. But the advantage of the capsule that is present prevents it from expanding disproportionately large. Okay. Kasi without the capsule, there is a risk for uh, swelling too much. For example, one example of that risk can be observed in your tonsil. <clears throat> Ang tonsil kasi, unencapsulated yan. There's no capsule. The reason why when your tonsils and uh, when the when the lymphocytes in your tonsils undergo clonal expansion and your tonsils begin to swell, it usually swells out of proportion, uh, which would now require it uh, for surgical removal. Kaya minsan, 
kailangan tanggalin yung tonsil because the swelling has reached a point that is, is now preventing you from eating, swallowing, or worse, it might even kill you because your airway will also be affected as well. Kaya dahil, dahil nga sa ang tonsils ay walang capsule. No? It's uncapsulated. Another dangerous example is the appendix. The appendix is also a lymphoid organ which, do, which is not encapsulated. And thus, when it triggers an immune response and the appendix begins to swell out of proportion, there is a danger for the appendix to rupture. Kasi sa sobrang laki. Dahil there's no capsule to limit its uh, swelling. And once it has swelled out of proportion, nagra-rupture siya. And once it ruptures, it's a life-threatening condition because the contents of your gastrointestinal tract, which is very corrosive, has been spilled in your abdominal cavity. And it will destroy everything in its path. That's the reason why it can lead to a life-threatening situation. And that is why doctors would often say, bakit hinintayin nyo pang pumutok yung appendix bago nyo din nila sa ospital? Dapat, habang nagsisimula pa lang yung pain at yung suffering ng pasyente, you should have brought the patient to the hospital to avoid these unwanted circumstances. Okay, the spleen is another lymphatic organ that is situated between the stomach and the diaphragm. It contains blood. Huh? It's very vascular, filled with venous sinuses and a population of red blood cells, macrophages, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and granular leukocytes. Um, the spleen is also one way of filtering the blood because it is where worn out and defective blood cells as well as platelets are eliminated. It is also a, an organ that can store platelets and provide defenses by attacking foreign substances in the blood because the spleen is a primary hematopoietic organ in terms of lymphocytes and is also the site for fetal hemopoiesis. Okay. Among the different organs of the spleen of the body, the spleen is considered as a non-vital organ, meaning to say it can be removed from your body without killing you. Unlike yung heart, lungs, ba, liver, the moment they remove, no, okay, yung kidney, the moment they remove it from your body, Kikiligwak, no? game over ka na. Pero yung spleen, if you suffer from a ruptured spleen while playing a very rugged sport, the spleen can be removed without causing death to the patient. You will survive from having your spleen removed. O yung tinatawag natin splenectomy. Okay. Now, let's look at the barriers. No? Mga iba-ibang barriers that the innate immunity provides us with. Huh? Um, first of all, the skin is a physical and chemical barrier because it possesses epidermal structures and constant shedding. Uh, maintain a complete uh, sealed off wall between the outside and the internal environment of the body. Aside from the skin, there are also mucous membranes kasi mga non-keratinized layers to. And then mga keratinized, kung nga skin is keratinized, ang mga mucous membranes naman are non-keratinized uh, membranes because there is a layer of sticky mucus that uh, traps microbes and cilia that propels it out, particularly sa respiratory tract. Uh, fluids such as tears, saliva, perspiration, and nasal secretion 
have the function of diluting and providing antibacterial action. Yung mga movement din tulad ng flow of urine, or elimination of waste through urination, defecation, and vomiting are other manifestation or representation of uh, uh, physical barriers. Okay, so at this point, um, I will stop at this point because from this point on, these are actually topics that involves immunology, which is no longer part of our discussion for the lymphatic system. You will learn this topic more when you are taking the subject of immunology. And I will also make it uh, a point to not include questions related to immunology in your enabling as well as your summative assessments. Okay, kasi ano na to eh? Immu immunology na to eh. Okay. Pero actually, ito lang yung part na medyo complicated na. Yung antigen antibody responses and how immune responses are activated. Okay. So I hope that you have learned something new from this topic of the lymphatic system. And if you have further questions about what we have discussed or what I have discussed for this topic, please feel free to communicate with me by sending me a private email uh, using Schoolbook, or you can even use this MS Team platform. But I would prefer very much Schoolbook because that is the platform that I, I always monitor from time to time. Kasi yung MS Team ginagamit ko lang yan when I conduct synchronous session, and in many instances I somehow overlooked some inquiries of the students when they use MST as the platform. So if you want to communicate with me faster, use the school book email for that purpose. Okay, thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you.